Hello everyone and welcome to my workshop. I'm Diane Desiel and today I'm going to show you how to do a drop shoulder and a flat head sleeve just like this one and the one I'm wearing. For today's video I decided to use my knit block pattern but you could do the same technique with any of your block, shirt block, coat block, basic bodice, all of them. So the first thing you do is to trace your back and front because we'll do the modification on both of them exactly the same way. So I did retrace my block and as you could see I also traced the seam line because I'm using my block with the seam allowance include. Those seam line I trace just the area that I'm going to change. Now the first thing we're going to do is trace a line square from the center front and also I'll do the same thing on center back, touching the shoulder and arm all point. Now I just added my intersection point also on the underarm point because we need to trace a square line from center front and center back for these two points also. Now we're ready to do the drop shoulder. Remember that if you want it to be straighter, the difference between the armhole and shoulder point and the underarm point should be a little smaller than what it is right now. The good thing with this technique is that you could do almost any measurement you want and it's all good. The only thing is you, ha you have to do the same thing for both back and front. For today's example, I'm going to double my shoulder measurement. Over here I have a 9 cm, so I'm going to go out on my square line by 9 cm. And I do the same thing on my back. Now what you have left to do is just retrace from your neck point to that new point. Now you should remember that if you want to change your neck, you should do it before retracing your shoulder and start your new shoulder from that new neck point. Now let's move the underarm point. For this one, I want to keep a little bit of a curve in the sleeve and the armhole. I'm going to go out from my underarm point, the original one, by 3 cm. And from that point, you could go down as much as you want. For this one, I'll go down, let's say, 5 cm. So my final point is right here. I will do the same thing exactly for my back. Square on my line, 3 cm out and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cm down. Now I'm ready to trace my new armhole. The only thing you should do is trace a little bit of a 90 degree from your shoulder line. And the rest is done by highs with the deepest part of the curve at the underarm. Same thing on the front, a little bit of a 90 degree. The last thing we have to do is to trace the side seam and I would do it 90 degree from the underarm line that we did or parallel to center front and back. Before I put my seam allowance, I'm going to place my notch so you measure pretty much the first one third from the underarm on the front. Same thing in the back, so divide it by three and you place your double notch. Now we could place the seam allowance on shoulder, armhole and the new side seam. Now your drop shoulder pattern is finished, we just have to do the sleeve. And to do that, I want you to measure from the underarm to the notch, put the measurement on the paper and also mark the full measurement all the way to the shoulder. Now to do the sleeve matching with the drop shoulder that we just did, some people are doing it by modifying the sleeve block that goes with the bodice they use. But I think since none of the lines are going to stay there, and this is a brand new armhole, I'd rather do a brand new sleeve. So take another piece of paper and fold it in the middle because most of the construction is going to be symmetrical. Now on the fold line, put your basic sleeve length measurement that is usually about 58 centimeter. 
Now to keep the same length to the sleeve, remembering that we did elongate the shoulder by 9 cm, from the top you're going to remove that measurement. So if I did elongate my shoulder 9, I'm going to remove 9 cm and this is going to be my new sleeve head. Now to find out the new bicep measurement, go back to your plan and just put your ruler from the shoulder and arm all point to the underarm point and find out what is the biggest distance. For this one it's about 1.5 cm. You could also check on your front. This one looks smaller so I'll take the 1.5 and this is going to give me my sleeve head measurement. 1.5 cm. Trace a square line then again on your plan just had both measurement of the back armhole and the front armhole. In that case it's 44.9 and divide it by 2 so we make the sleeve perfectly even on both sides. Now you take this half measurement starting at the sleeve head. I have 22.45 and when your 22.45 touches the line you trace now I'm going all the way to the bottom, square a line and on this line you put the width you want your sleeve to be at the bottom. The sweater that I show you at the beginning had a wider cuff so for this one I'm just going to do it square from my underarm point so it'll be a wide sleeve. All the symmetrical area is done and so I'm going to trace to report those points on the other side, the bottom and underarm seam and the underarm point. Open your paper and retrace these information to get them on the other side. Now I know my sleeve is going to be really flat but I'm still going to do a little curve with a difference in the back and the front so I'll have a very good fit. So if you say that this side will be the front, you divide your line by 4 and go up. In that case I will go up like a 3 millimeter at the first quarter and go down about 3 millimeter at the last quarter. Then you connect the dot keeping a 90 degree for a little while at the sleeve head. Touching the middle point and then down. Now on the back side you're going to divide the line by 3 and go up this time a little more like a 0.6 and then down a little bit between the last third and the underarm point maybe 2-3 millimeter. Then connect all your lines. The sleeve is finished you could now put your seam allowance all around. I put the seam allowance only on one side here because I'm going to cut that part fold but for now I'm going to cut the sleeve head fold to cut the rest of your pattern. The last thing you'll have to do is to report the notch level from the armhole to the sleeve head and you're going to do it the same way you took the measurement I mean from the underarm point. So this is my front and then on the back the second notch a centimeter further about the sleeve head notch matching the shoulder. If you remember I had a difference of one millimeter bigger on my front. In that case the difference between my front and my back armhole was only one millimeter. That means I'm going to put my notch or shoulder notch half the difference towards the smallest side. In that case half a millimeter towards the back. My sleeve piece is also finished. I'm just going to put my grain line and information. This pattern piece should be cut two times. Now my pattern is all complete and cut and I just wanted to show you that if I put my sleeve head right at, at the shoulder point and I put my underarm overlapping with my underarm, you have a nice angle for your sleeve and you're sure that it's going to be comfortable when you raise your hand, the top is not going to go up because we did a very flat head sleeve. My sleeve head here was 1.5 cm but we could have decided to make it 2 cm or 3 cm, it would have worked the same way except that bigger is your sleeve head, less comfortable let's say is the top because when the angle of the sleeve 
is more down as soon as you raise your arm the whole top is coming up so just to let you know that you could decide it's not a fixed measurement it could be many measurement and it's all good that's it for today i hope the video will be helpful thanks for watching and i see you next time